Hey guys, welcome back. This week we start planning our next ability. Over the next few videos, we're going to go through the process of ability creation step by step. Watch closely because I need your help. Building a good gameplay ability can take a week or two of work, so I'm not going to have enough time to be able to create all of the abilities that we need in our Hubworld MMO example project. So this is where you come in. I need you to help create them. Now you may be thinking, I'm not a game programmer. I don't know C++. Well, you're in luck. Gameplay abilities are usually created by game designers with blueprints. Sure, there's a game programmer who builds custom ability tasks and other systems, but the game designers build the abilities. So I'm gonna be the game programmer and you are going to be the game designer. I've created a new channel in the Discord called Ability Development. You can use this channel to discuss your ability design, get help if you get stuck on anything, and if your gameplay ability design needs a custom ability task or some other system, then I can add it to the Hubworld MMO example project to support your ability. As we go through each step of the design process, be thinking about the kind of ability you want to create. Let's get started planning our next ability. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to brainstorm some interesting ideas. I was talking to my friend Patrick a few weeks ago, and I asked him to come up with an ability design based around lightning damage. He said he wants to see an ability that finds an area in front of the player and splits the ability damage between all the players in the targeted area by randomly striking them with electrical charges. This kind of design has a lot of interesting elements that will require some advanced techniques, so it's perfect for our next ability. The next thing we need to do is gather resources. For this, I turn to the Hubworld MMO staging project. In the staging project, I've got all of these Paragon characters loaded in, and this is what we're going to be limited to using for building the abilities for this project. So while a lot of the assets on the Unreal Engine Marketplace are free, like, you know, there's monthly free assets and things like that, we can't use those because they're, they're not free to everyone. They're only free to the people who downloaded it that month, right? And so what we're gonna do to make sure we don't run into any licensing issues is we're going to stick to assets from the Paragon characters. But don't worry, there's a lot of good stuff in here. So this, this is what you're gonna need to pick from. You're gonna need to load these uh, Paragon characters into a, your own staging project so that you can start pulling out the assets that you need. And in this case, we're just trying to, trying to gather all those assets that we need. So I looked through all the different ones and I found ones that had lightning damage and it looks like Richter has some lightning damage stuff. And so I went uh, I went down here and I found particles and I think it was in his ultimate. And uh, and I found I found one that I liked here. It was it was this one here. And so I, you know, made some changes, changed the color, you know, this is kind of a red. And so I went more of a purple lightning thing and uh, and I moved it over into our HTB assets folder here. So it's under particles lightning. I'll play it here so you can see what it looks like. And we can also, I think I've got it dropped in the world here. We can see what it looks like a little bit better here. by resetting the meter, right? So you can see there's kind of like a flash and then there's like some lightning. So that's kind of going to what's going to be randomly hitting our targets in that area. Now we'll have to find something else to put kind of over top. as kind of like where they're coming from. Um, but I think there's some other interesting choices there. Now the next thing you're going to run into is that when you go to try to move this to the Hubworld MMO project, you're gonna have trouble. And so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna come in here to migrate and you'll see that some of the assets here are in the HTTP assets folder and that's good, but some of them are still in the Paragon Richter and we can't use that, we can't use that. So what we have to do is we have to slowly start moving each one of the assets in the Paragon Richter over into the HTTP assets folder if they don't already exist. We've got to make sure to put them in the right folders, in the right categories, right? We're trying to keep this organized. But what's going to happen is at a certain point, you might find that like 
this FX emissive modulate was already there, right? It was down here, but it was already up there. You can't use both. And so you have to go in and start editing. Anytime there's a duplicate, you can't move it. You actually have to go find the reference and point it to the one that's already in the HTTP assets folder. So this, this can take a few hours um, per each one of these particles to go through and slowly clean it up. But it's super important to do that now because we don't want duplicate assets in the project. We don't want to create a mess in the project. We want to keep everything nice and organized. Once we've gathered our resources, it's helpful to create an ability timeline. So that's what I've done here. I've created an ability timeline, or at least a, a first rough draft on one. And so we break it up into three swim lanes, server, owning client, and proxy client, because we want to know what's going to activate where and what's going to be replicated and how this is all going to sync up. So we start with the owning client and activate ability, right? And so it's going to send that activ ability activation up to the server, okay? And but at the same time, it's going to start the casting animation predictively, okay? And then at some point on the server, the confirm ability, confirm activation of the ability is actually going to get replicated back to the owning client. This gets done automatically. You don't see this, but I wanted to throw that in there just so you can see what happens. One of the things that we're looking at while we build this is we're looking at each time the swim lane is crossed because that's an area that's replicated. That's what's going to cost us and eventually lower our max player per server count. The ones between the server and the owning client are a lot less expensive than the one between the server and proxy clients. The reason being is there's only ever one owning client. Proxy clients is equal to the number of irrelevant proxy clients, which could be equal to, since you can't control where people go on your map, usually, unless you have a special game design, it could be equal to the max number of players per server. So everybody could all run into each other in the same area, and now the number of times that you'd have to send, say, this start casting animation down to the proxy clients is equal to the max number of players. So this is this is where it really gets expensive, and we'd really like to minimize the number of times we have to replicate something down to the proxy client. We're going to start unoptimized, and then we're going to come back later and improve this. So uh, we start our casting animation on the server side, right? That's the these two are tied together. That's that um, you know wait. Uh, play in a montage. And so that's how that works behind the scenes. And then I wanted to show that this wasn't directly connected to the activation. It actually is directly starting right after the start casting animation. It kind of goes through here over to the delay task, just like it does here. Go to the delay task, right? That's in our ability. It's going to delay for a certain amount of time while the casting animation. And you might say, well, why aren't we using a uh, notify from the animation. Why aren't we using a notify? And you you can, you can, but, but one of the goals of the Hub World MMO example project is to get the maximum number of players per server possible. I know that that's something we're going to do in the future. And one of the ways to do that is going to be to disable the animation system on the server so that the server doesn't even play animations, doesn't really know anything about them. We may have to modify the engine to do that, but I'm willing to do that. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're not even not even burdening the server with playing any animations. Well, if we put notifies in the animation that need to fire on the server, that's going to be a problem. So instead, we're going to use these delay tasks so that we don't have to play the animations, which are going to be more expensive than a delay task. Delay task is going to be cheaper, less to do per tick. And so we're going to have some kind of delay. It'll be preset. Now, you may be thinking, you know, that's really a pain to have to go into each one of these abilities and we've got this delay task for a certain amount of time. We have to figure out how long it is for the animation. If we change the animation, somebody has to go back and change it. And you're exactly right. But, but here's what's coming. Right now, we're building these abilities kind of as like a bit of a prototype to kind of see what we've got. But what we're going to do later is we're going to take those patterns, OK? And we're going to condense those patterns down into C++. And then we're just going to drive them with data in Blueprints, OK? And we might even, we might even connect to a data table so that instead of having to go into these different abilities to update these delays, you'll just have this one Excel spreadsheet that just has all your abilities and all the data points for that. And you can easily make changes, upload that new Excel spreadsheet and, and everything will match. So that is coming. So after the delay task, we spawn our effects over the target area and we can do that predictively on the uh, owning client 
as well. At this point, um, it probably has confirmed it. So technically we're not predicting at this point, but we're not, we're not having it replicate back to the owning client. Um, but we probably already know whether this has been confirmed or rejected. If it's rejected, it'd never even get to this. Somewhere in the delay task, it would exit out and roll back. Um, on the server, we spawn that effects over the target area. I'm thinking some kind of like, you know, lightning cloud or something. We'll see what we can find in the Paragon assets. And then it is that is going to have to get um, replicated down to the proxy clients. Uh, this will probably be, well, in the initial version, this will be a gameplay queue. Gameplay queue will do a multicast down to the proxy clients. But we can improve that later too. The ability timeline continues on the next slide. We will trace an area for targets on the server. Okay, not on the client. And then we will go into this looping section. Okay, the looping section has this random delay. Okay, so it's gonna be a random element here. And then it picks a target from this trace area for targets. And we'll do some kind of thing where we like mark a target off, right? So we'll keep we'll keep data on this and we'll have a list of targets and we'll mark them off as they get picked, right? And as they get picked, it won't pick the same one again. Or maybe we have another variation where it just randomly picks the targets too and some get hit multiple times and some get hit none. We've got a lot of options there. We can turn that into settings and, and potentially use this for multiple uh, abilities or multiple variations. And then what we're going to do is we're going to spawn this damage effects. This again, initial version gameplay queue, it's, but we're going to send this down to the owning client. Uh, and we're also going to send this down to proxy clients. So those are going to get replicated with multicast. And then we're going to apply the damage to that target, right? And we'll do this loop over and over, depending on how many targets were in the trace area, or maybe some other setting that says, hey, it hits this many times, regardless of how many targets, right? We've got a lot of ability of, we got a lot of options. And then we're going to go into our end ability, right? And so since we're only really running that predictive, we're not running anything predictively on the owning client at that point, we'll probably not end the ability on the owning client. We'll just have the server send it down and end it on the owning client. And we'll probably also have some kind of delay in the owning client just as a sanity check to make sure that, hey, if this thing doesn't kill itself after a certain long amount of time, just kill it. So that's our ability timeline, which helps us to plan. After we create the ability timeline, we have a better idea of what ability tasks we need. So at this point, we wanna make sure that we have all the ability tasks that we need. Based on what I've put together, we, we have everything. Well, we're gonna be able to do the, the trace using the that multi-trace uh, that I created that we've been using in the Hubworld MMO. And uh, everything else, we have, we have a delay task, we have a play and a montage task, we have gameplay cues, we have everything we need. Your ability, maybe you've come up with a design and you don't have everything you need. So this is that point where you need to go into the Discord and, and let me know what you need for your ability and we can talk about it and see if maybe there is something out there that you can use or if I need to create something custom for your ability. And then what we wanna do is we wanna construct a quick prototype. This doesn't have to be fully working. What we're trying to do here at this point is we're trying to decide the feasibility of what we're doing and then we're also trying to see hey, was this a bad idea, right? Was this a bad idea? And so we wanna construct a quick prototype just to kind of see how things are looking and see if this is, this is a route we wanna continue on or we need to go back to the drawing board. In next week's video, we'll start constructing that prototype to make sure that our design is solid. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The open world server and Hubworld MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.